second day, welcome to Pliska. Pliska, the first Bulgarian capital town. And here we're gonna visit first the city, how was the city behind the fortress. And after this, we're gonna see a little more from here, a, a very big basilica, the basilica of this time. So this is for our second day. Enjoy. <laughs> In the inner town of Pliska, what are we going to see here? Pliska represented the fortified residency of the Bulgarian rulers, the most important component of the capital of medieval Bulgaria during the pagan period, so end of the 7th century, and three decades after the adoption of Christianity as a state religion. First, the flat terrace and the Khan residency to be was occupied by a temporary bivouac. Palace buildings were erected gradually at the place. The first of them had wooden structures and a circular layout. After 811, the fired buildings in the center and the wooden protective wall that surrounded them were replaced by new ones, built entirely of chiseled stone and bricks. The inner fortification belt of the capital appeared the wall of bricks that formed the residential and, uh, and facilities part of the palace, the so-called citadel, the fortified Khan's residency, or called also Aur. This was a material equivalent of the increased resources and political authority of the Bulgarian rulers with a high level of the applied building techniques. Impressive monumental architecture and well-developed public facilities. Thus, during the reign of Kam Krum and his inheritors uh, Ormutak, Malmir and Presian in the first half of the 9th century, Pliska turned into one of the most representative and civilist capitals in early medieval Europe. Pliska was the place where two events of extreme importance for the Bulgarian identity took place, the converting to Christianity in 864 and the receiving of the disciples of the Cyril and Methodius brothers in 886, who launched the spreading of the Slav alphabet in Bulgaria. This happened under the reign of the last pagan Khan and first Christian ruling Prince Boris Mikhail in 852 to 889. In 893, the capital of Bulgaria was transferred in Preslav, what we saw the day before. The inner town of Pliska lost its representative function, but it preserved its importance as a fortified center of the agglomerations of town with numerous population and developed crafts and trade. In the end of the 10th century and the beginning of the 11th century, after the invasion of the Russians and the Byzantines, the Byzantine administration and military uh, garrison were accommodated there. The attacks of the so-called late nomads, those the Peshenges and the Utsis, that followed caused the abandoning of the former Khan residency. Now we must take a look at the modern Bulgarian history. After 1878, so after the liberation from the Ottoman Empire, nobody was left behind able to rule a modern country. The first elite, so the first 
president, the first rulers of the modern Bulgaria, were imported from the Czech Republic. And so in the same time, a man named Karel Škorpil came from the Czech Republic to do the first archaeologic investigations here in Bulgaria. It need the man like Karel Skorpil that after 500 years the first capital Pliska became known to the Bulgarian history. During the communist time it was absolutely not interesting to do some investigations in the history of Bulgaria. What was interesting for the big brother Russia was only that people has to know that they are brothers and they coming like the Russians also from a Slavic base or from a Slavic family. The grave of the archaeologue Karl Stoppel. Today maybe we can be happy that during the communist time nothing has been done to find or even to destruct something. So you see here now in the modern times people digging, excaving with all the modern material what we have today. <laughs> 